Hello, welcome to Ditch the Dry Month here at ProDog Raw. My name's Anna, I'm part of the ProDog team. And if you're a dog owner who'd like to feel equipped to make the best nutritional choices for your dog, then you're in exactly the right place. I've got two really great guests joining me in just a few minutes. But whilst I wait for people to jump on live, I'll say uh, welcome to those of you who are watching this back. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending what time of day you are watching. Thank you so much for joining us, regardless of when you watch this back. Uh, please still join in the conversation in the comments. We're always monitoring this page. So if you do have any questions, the team will get back to you. I can see a few people are now joining live. So big welcome to you. And as I've said, if you're a dog owner who'd like to feel equipped to make the best nutritional choices for your dog, then you are in exactly the right place. My name's Anna. I'm part of the ProDog team. I have two great guests joining me in just a couple of minutes. If you've already ditched the dry, if you are already a raw feeder, we really, really encourage you to join in the conversation in the comments and share your own experiences because your knowledge could really help somebody else. And if you're not yet a raw feeder, whether you've heard about raw feeding but not yet made the switch, perhaps you've heard people mention a more natural approach to dog food but you don't really know where to start, or maybe you've heard loads of confusing information on the topic then this is definitely the conversation to be a part of today and all month on our social media pages. So uh, before we get into it to, for today, I, um, I just wanted to give you a bit of background on how Ditch the Dry started. It's now in its third year and we basically set up the campaign because we recognise there's so many dogs out there that are not yet experiencing the enormous health benefits of a natural diet. And we knew that one of the main reasons for this was that raw feeding can sometimes feel quite baffling. There's so many myths, misconceptions, misinformation and opinions out there. So we totally understand why it might seem complex. And that's exactly what our Ditch the Dry campaign is for. So we're here to share the facts about canine nutrition, share with you any tips on uh, making a successful switch to natural feeding and also to tackle some of those myths. So if this sounds good to you, if you've got friends, if you've got family, if you've got neighbours who are also dog owners and you think they'd be open to this conversation as well, then please do share our page with them share our lives with them and we're here simply um, for this month to talk about the facts so that dog owners can really feel empowered to make their own decisions on the best diet for their dogs so i encourage you to get involved in the conversation if you've got specific questions drop them in there we have some of the pro dog team in the comments as well so they'll get back to you either during the live or straight after uh, we will also be looking through the comments after and we love, love, love to see all of your input. So hit the like button. Let us know you're with us. Let us know where you are in the world, where you're watching from. And also, if you are a raw feeder, just drop into the comments. How long have you been raw feeding for? And as well as anything that you wish you'd been told when you first ditched the processed dog food, anything that would really be helpful to somebody else who's just starting out to know and so with that that's enough of me so let's get our our guests on so we have Heidi Maskelin who is founder and chief of Pro Dog Raw she's an absolute gold mine of information when it comes to dogs health and well-being plus she's one of the most passionate animal loving humans uh, that I know. Uh, she'll go to the back of beyond and back again twice over uh, for the benefit of, uh, of animals. So 
welcome to you, Heidi. And of course, we have uh, Dr. Nick Thompson as well. Hey, Anna. Um, Hi, Heidi. Otherwise, otherwise known as the Holistic Vet, he's been practicing. He's been a practicing vet for thirty-six years. Twenty-six of those years with a focus on raw feeding and holistic care. He also provides consultancy services to some of the UK and Europe's premier raw food companies. He's lectured and consulted in raw food nutrition and medicine across the world. He's the founding president of the International Raw Feeding Veterinary Society and most recently co-presenter of the Raw Pet Medics weekly podcast Facebook Live uh, where he discusses food, the world, holistic health of pets with his co-presenters every week. So welcome to you as well Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Hey Anna, it's lovely to see you, you well? Yes, really well and yeah. I tried to say all of that in one breath but it was never going <laughs> so should we get into it yeah let's jump Let's do it. so um why should people consider ditching the dry and giving raw a try Heidi let's let's start with you because pro dogs creation basically stemmed from your your own personal loss and that's fueled your passion for sharing raw feeding with the world so would you just share a little bit about your story? Sure. Um, so like I'd imagine quite a lot of people watching today, I was and have been forever a dog lover. And I did what I, you know, sure lots of people are doing, which is followed the, the lead of my parents and they fed kibble. So I was feeding kibble. Um, and I remember when I first left home, I, I went out and got my first two dogs, two Sharpays, Drago and Phoenix. They were brothers. Um, and, you know, I, I believed I was doing everything, you know, to the best of my ability. I was uh, buying a, a, as expensive kibble as I could afford. Um, you know, I was regular at the vet with my vaccinations and my monthly flea tick wormers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the other side to me is I've personally been obsessed with uh, nutrition since I was a small child. Um, you know, I'm 44 and I've never, ever, ever eaten a McDonald's, for example. So I would never put anything into my body. And this started at 14. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit geeky around nutrition. And I r literally would read anything and everything. And I still do today that I would eat myself. But I never, ever once questioned what I was feeding my dogs. Never questioned it. Just because it was a nice, you know... Um, bright, vibrant looking packet and it said the right things on the label, I just took that as red and I put that food in the dog's bowl day after day and I never questioned it until Phoenix developed cancer at three years of age. And if anybody watching has had that horrific, you know, uh, episode at the vets where they say, really sorry to tell you, but that this lump, you know, is, is cancerous, it is devastating. And that for me, you know, I'd done everything right. I'd checked my breed, you know, I'd gone to the right breeders. I, I'd, I'd done everything right according to what I knew. And that was where it started for me, the questions in my head. Why has this happened? This shouldn't have happened to him. I've done it all right. What's gone wrong? And it was in that initial process um, that I started to question what I was doing and reading and i'll never forget somebody walking into my life a lady never seen her before never seen her after and she said we would i was talking about my my experience and she said to me you need to look at raw feeding and i remember saying what's that and she went go and read about it and that literally was the start and uh when i started to understand what i've been doing i remember i remember exactly where i was I was in my kitchen. I got my packet of um, Ardent Grange was the brand I used to feed. And I started reading the ingredients. And I remember having this overwhelming desire at that point to just smash my head off the kitchen counter because I was like, oh, my God. And then because I was like, I know so much about nutrition and I've never once 
read the ingredients if i cannot you know if i could buy into it and just just not even question this what what does somebody who doesn't have my obsession with nutrition do you know and it was at that point i thought i've got to tell everybody about this i've got to tell everybody um and i switched them over uh, very, uh, right yeah you know, quite far on in their life but another dog at the time he was much younger and i switched him over Vinny. three weeks later i was just watching him trot around the kitchen with a physique with a coat with and i remember walking around the garden looking for poo there was no poo i remember that going where's all the poo uh, you know just all these mad revelations that you have um and back then for me there wasn't the sort of information that there is now there weren't the experts on hand so i was kind of just muddling my way through um now there's there's so much more information out there um but you know i would just say to people like you i was that person you just you know i'd never questioned it and when i did and i started to just have these light bulb moments and common sense essentially um, made some changes and it blew my mind and that was the start that was the start of it for me yeah. That's amazing. That's a really great story. And I'm just going to jump in there. This is not scripted at all. But it's you You say you you fed your dogs because you thought that was the best thing to do and it was kibble and everything else. OK, but that's forgivable because you haven't been, you know, you haven't been taught nutrition officially. Yeah. And, and what have you. I was raised by a nurse and a doctor they were into health food. This is during the 70s, right? So I, I was being given as a kid um, brewer's yeast mixed with orange juice. Okay. <laughs> Tasted disgusting. This is this is health food before health food was even a thing. Okay. I was raised in that in that environment. My uh, my dad, the doctor, he he rarely, rarely, rarely prescribed medicines. He would just say, right, if you got a cold, he would steam us. And if you got a cut, you just clean it and off you go. I used to get boils on my on my hands and he would say, I wanted something dramatic to happen. And he would say, oh yeah, you just bathe it with a bit of hot water and it will take care of itself. Yeah, that was the kind of holistic way that I was brought up. Food, we we rarely, 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 rarely ever ate out. This was before the days of, of lots of processed food in the in the supermarket. Mum all even used to make her own pizza. Okay, no bought in pizza. Okay, so and that was considered junk food. Okay, on a Friday night we'd have junk food. And that was pizza. Okay, so the point of this is that I, that's how I was raised. I then did uh, buy. Uh, 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 chemistry, physics, and biology at A level. Okay, so I should have known a thing or two because of that. I then spent uh, six years and had two degrees in veterinary medicine, and I then came out of vet, uh, out of out of college, and continued to feed dogs on kibble for my first few years in practice. And I'm thinking, I, I was listening to your story and saying, okay, okay, uh, but you know, and I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, she might be guilty of of ignorance but i'm twice 10 times more guilty because i had all this information all this background and yet still i was drinking the kool-aid i was going with what the uh the, the kibble manufacturers who were constantly whispering at you throughout college and uh when you were in practice i was buying all that stuff and it was only when I started to even think about raw food that I thought, oh, my goodness, this is the most obvious thing in the world that we should feed dogs what they have evolved to eat. It's as simple as that. Don't feed them ultra processed food. Mm. There you go. I just wanted to say that, that, that you yeah, know, I'm, I, I I'm, I'm even more guilty than myself, you. Nick, thank you. I've just <laughs> just forgiven myself <laughs> yeah there'll be yeah. so many people out there that are watching this now that will really resonate with your story as well Heidi mm. um you know it just and it, it just becomes that ingrained norm in society that feeding kibble is just what you do it was the same for me I was we always had uh, dogs uh, growing up never really quite never really questioned it this is what you did so you know um thank you for sharing that thank you for sharing that story but nick from your your perspective as a vet mm. 
I know we could talk about this all day, <laughs> but just give us some some um, elements of why what's wrong with dry dog food. It's got it's got all the vitamins in it. It says so on the pack. It's got <laughs> extra vitamins and minerals in it. Okay, there's a big dif- difference between nutrition and food. I think we should be feeding our dogs food. Full stop. That's it. Okay. Um, uh, I, you know what? I really don't know where to start. I'm currently writing a, a video on this stuff, and and the, and I've got I, I've got beyond thirty reasons why not to feed raw. Okay, but the th- problem is every time I I go to finish the presentation off, I think of another reason to do it. I'm c- currently at about thirty seven reasons. So watch this space, and that will be coming out soon. So really, I don't know where to start. But how about we start with ultra processed food? Ultra processed food is it's not actually food. It is uh, it, it's a product which is derived from food. That's an official definition. There's a, there's a there's a, a, an, a an association called the Nova, and they have a Nova classification of food. You've got grade one, which is basically you know, carrots or meat, all the way down to uh, grade four, which is ultra processed food. And there was a a a, a, a study in 2018. A, a long and really big study that they did in France looking at processed food and real food because the French are real big foodies. And they published this paper and it's now, you can find it on the NHS website. If you if you just go to NHS and put in ultra processed food and some of the, they have many, many revelations within this paper. Uh, but what they did find was that for every 10% increase in ultra processed food, there is a corresponding increase in the chance of getting cancer. Okay. And you will, what they found was that if you, every increase of 10% will increase your chance of getting cancer. And uh, what they found was that uh, with, with, with women, for example, with breast cancer, that, that, that if you're eating any significant quantity of ultra processed food, not totally like we feed our dogs, but just some processed food, you, you increase your chance of breast cancer by 12%. That's enormous in the cancer world. People get scared when they, you talk about an increase of 1%, but 12% is ridiculous. So this study, you know, it, it, this is with ultra processed and real food. And we, we professionals and we dog owners feed 100% ultra processed food yeah we are told to feed cans and kibble for an entire lifetime and 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 i'm just i'm speechless with how wrong that is how can it be so different for people people should be eating fresh and natural food and dogs yeah it's okay to give them ultra processed food i think the subtext of this is that they're just dogs and it doesn't matter and you can just feed them whatever's convenient. And and I think that that's really, really sad. Um, how's that for starters, Anna? That's that's great for starters. <laughs> but what about something that really intrigued me was something that you actually wrote um, for us uh-huh. was about the rendering and extrusion uh, and okay. the process of actually making the the food and what it yeah. actually that actually does to the in the natural ingredients that may once have existed yes yeah okay so uh meat meal is one of the ingredients basically you get meat meal and you mix it with some kind of carbohydrate which will induce obesity but that's another story so rendering what do you how do you get rendered meat meal the answer is that what farmers do is with with any any uh, um, dead, diseased, or dying animals, they will send them off to be rendered. And what happens is the guy at the rendering factory, they will tip them all into this big vat of of bubbling. It's like soup, if you like, except it's got hooves, it's got the rumen contents, it's got any antibiotics that that the animal was on. It's got pus and it's got all sorts, you know, just everything, every filthy thing. It's got feces, it's got rat, rats, it's got rat feces in it. You name it, it's there. And what they do is they they boil that up. Not only that, many of the animals will have ear tags, plastic ear tags. 
and the guys who are working at the rendering plant and my heart goes out to those guys you know um they haven't got time to go sift through all this stuff and so they'll just chuck everything into these big bloated bodies they'll just chuck those into this enormous great vat plastic and all if the farmer turns up with four chickens in a plastic bag the plastic bag goes in as well this is well recognized all around the world okay and what they do is they boil that and boil it and boil it and boil it to sterilize it essentially they'll then get rid of all the liquids and uh, dry off the meat the loop at the bottom which is dissolve bone and meat and what have you they'll dry that and put it in a bag or in a container or something like that and that is meat and bone meal which is an integral part of the uh, uh when when you make kibble okay so That's... when so, sorry to interrupt but when mm. so when you see on the label of a bag of kibble meat meal yeah that's, that's where it comes from. That's is. where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's probably been on the high seas coming from goodness knows where, the States, from China, from Australia, wherever it might be, uh, wherever it's cheapest, actually. And, you know, so it's it's not even fresh. So it's not natural. It's got no vitamins to talk of. It does contain protein. But what's the quality of that protein? Mm -hmm. And then th they just mix that with a bit of grain. And uh, so the, the extrusion process, can, so what they'll do is they will, they will take that powder and they will take the grain or the carbohydrate powder and they'll put it through this big long tube and fire steam into it to superheat it because this makes the whole thing congeal together and it cooks it and congeals it. Uh, it also cooks the grain. So the grain goes from grainy stuff into a porridgey sort of thing. And that's that's. Uh, uh, that's why the, these biscuits stick together because they're, they're congealed with all this carbohydrate. That heating process can happen up to six times. So any vitality, not that there was any vitality in the initial ingredients, by the time they've been heated and cooled six times, there's nothing left. You try having your stew and heating it and cooling yeah. it six times under pressure and see how much goodness there is left in that. Okay. It's just, it, it's not food. And we know that there's no goodness left in it because after this thing has been extruded through a, through a mesh to make, you know, cute shapes, it's then dried and heated and cooled and heated and cooled. And fat is added to uh, balance the, 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 the calorie levels. They also have to uh, uh, put on uh, vitamins because there's yeah. virtually no significant nutrition in it so they actually because they've 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 killed the food they have to revitalize it with artificial um vitamins and additives at the end before they put it in the bag and put it on a lorry and and and, and then it comes to you so this this is how we feed dogs this is how 80 yeah. percent of people in the uk and the usa feed their dogs and that's considered okay and i think in 100 years time they're going to look back you know how we look at the victorians and say they were brutal for putting children up chimneys i think yeah. we're going to look back and think um the you know in 2022 can you imagine they were actually feeding there were 80 percent of the population were, were were deluded into thinking that feeding this ultra processed food even though they knew it was bad for you and it enhances cancer they thought that that was an okay thing and I yeah. think that that's how it's going to be in future. OK, and, and uh, thankfully, there are people like you and Heidi and me who have actually seen it's it's the king's was the king's new clothes. We have yeah. seen the reality and we're not just going la 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 la. It's OK because the food companies tell us it's OK. And yeah. it, it's just grim. It's just so grim. And it, it's just if if anyone is is watching in the comments, is this something that you um, were aware of? I mean, obviously, it's not something that the cable companies uh, put on the packet. Um, so I'd love to hear, hear what your thoughts are after hearing that. Um, but let's start with the let's start with the basics then. So we're saying ditch the dry, switch to a natural raw diet. So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we actually talking about going right back to basics what are we talking about when we talk about a natural raw diet for dogs 
Me or Heidi? He's, oh, sorry. Either, either. I think it's Heidi. <laughs> Heidi, if it's your turn, uh, there's a great book that I'll, I'll just go and, um, and run to the uh, my bookshelf. I've got a really good book uh, uh, t to recommend to people so that they can hear, they can yeah. read about how kibble is made. Okay, because this is all about ditch the dry. Okay, so yeah. these are the reasons why. So Heidi, yeah. you can take the floor for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Go on, Heidi. So, I mean. To me, it's just essentially following nature and, you know, bringing a dog back to its natural elected diet. And we yeah. all know what dogs do. If you get a fluffy toy and you throw it, you know, they, they chase after it, they grab it, they shake it. They're in, they're in, you know, they're imitating prey drive. And I just think we've, you know, we've all got caught up in, in this, um, you know, this, this, uh, process of, of, of like you say just doing what our parents did and we haven't questioned it and for me I just thought it made so much common sense I got some raw food I fed it to my dog and you don't have to be an expert or a vet you just need to be an owner who can assess the improvement that you will see in your dog because nobody knows your animal like you nobody knows your animal like you and for me what I saw was uh, a waist. I remember this waist appearing. I remember muscular shoulders appearing. I remember breath that smelled good. You know, who remembers dogs that used to pa pass wind and you'd have to exit, you'd have to leave the room, you know? Um, yeah. And it sounds vile, but you become a little bit obsessed with poo because you're looking at this poo going, hold on a minute, that's different. It looks different. It smells different. It's less frequent. It's like clean poo. Uh, ears stop being smelly, eyes stop running. I remember one one of the things to me was I suddenly went, hold on a minute. I looked at a photo I had on my on my side of my dog Vinny, and his eyes were running. And then I looked at him and I was like, oh my God, your eyes have stopped running. So my um take on it is you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. And I will be astounded if within three weeks it's that fast of changing. Mm -hmm to just a natural diet. That's all it is. It's not voodoo. It's not, you know, it's not some new, you know, uh, you know, fancy, you know, trend. It's just taking a dog. I mean, put it this way. It's a long story, but I have a ball python. I was supposed to be looking after it for a month. That was three years ago. Anyway, the, the elected diet for that is obviously uh, frozen thawed prey, i.e gerbils i have to dangle them around and it comes out and it attacks them and it eats them whole it's a bit grim but you know it's what the it's what a reptile a snake naturally eats if i went upstairs with a packet of i don't know gerbil flavored crisps and put it in the tank you'd all have me removed from my house and sectioned you know because you'd be like what are you doing you know horses we talk about dr grass we bring horses to grass and they eat and in, in horse world you know we talk about it as dr grass because it's the best thing for for horses to eat. you know where have we got so far removed from that you know that's the bit that when you just take a step back feeding a dog a natural diet is the most obvious thing in the world and i would say to anybody watching this who's you know contemplating it but not sure Take the plunge and do it because you will never look back. It blew my mind. And three weeks later, I was like, wow. I just remember having that, wow. You know, his coat was, and I know it sounds silly, but I've had people say to me, my white bits on my dog look whiter. Do you think I'm mad? And I'm like, no, I got that. You know, they just glow. And also, you know, the sort of attitude you get when you bring out, you know, it's feeding time. They are just enamored. They are enamored with feeding time and they are real dogs. Just give them real food. Their temperament changes, their, you know, their energy changes. You just see it on every level. But I would say as the owner, you're the best person to assess that because you know your animal inside out and you will, I will guarantee you, see positive change and fast. It's not like you have to do this for a year. It happens so rapidly. The fastest response I ever had was a customer who the next day went, my dog's completely different. And even I was a bit like, wow, that's fast. But, you know, you do see, you know, fundamental changes and fast. So I would implore anybody who sat on the fence or been thinking about it, you know, try it. Try it for a month. 
And if you think, oh, I can't see any positive changes, well, you know, hey, but I'll guarantee you will, every time, without fail. I would totally, totally agree with that. I, but I would say, I'll, I'll tell you a story. The fastest I've ever seen is 48 hours, okay? You've beaten me on the 24-hour thing there, Heidi. But I, uh, I remember this dog. She was a, an old English, old English sheepdog. Yeah, Dulux dog. Big, lots of shaggy hair. Lovely, lovely dog. And she was called Emma. And she had never had a solid poo in her entire life okay and she uh came to me uh five years down the line and the owner it was for something else actually but but um she the, the owner mentioned this thing because some some owners actually think that a, a a sloppy poo that they have to scrape off the pavement is okay is a normal thing it's, i'm yeah. telling you now it's not the the perfect poo should be able to pick up with two fingers okay i take great delight in 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 playing golf with my my dog. i've got two whippets right and with a stick with just the end of a stick you can go dunk and knock them into the woods so uh where was i we changed emma's diet now yeah, it's really simple we put, put her onto a raw food diet and within 48 hours she had a solid poo. The owner rang me after 48 hours and I thought, oh no, what's happened with this dog? Okay. And she was actually in tears. And she said through her tears, this lovely, lovely lady, she said, uh, Emma's had a solid poo. And that's the first time in her life. She And she... <laughs> He's beside herself. But that's what you see. I'd say within two weeks, you're going to see yeah. sweeter breath, like you say. Sweeter yeah. breath, better gut, uh, bloom to the coat, cleaner teeth. I can tell you stories about white clean white teeth. And, Don't forget like, that. White to white bits. Funny. White to white bits. Yeah, white this white is bit. it. I mean, I, 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 a long time ago, I went up to Sirencester Agricultural College and and did a, a talk for the Hunt and Shoot and Fishing Brigade. And, the, you know, all these all these men and women piled in in their tweeds and what have you and i was talking to them about raw food and there was a guy in the in the front row and he sat there like this for the entire time and i was saying this is really good and it'll really help and what have you and he emailed me a couple of months later and said i was the guy at the front of that lecture and i didn't believe a word of it However, I wanted to prove you wrong, so I put my dogs onto raw food, which is a brilliant thing to do, and I, I welcome anybody to do that. Yeah, have a chat with with with, with Heidi or Pro Dog or whoever, do it. He did that, and he said, "You were right. I was wrong. My dogs have now got perfect teeth." Yeah, and they were they were youngish dogs. I don't know, four or five years old, something like that, and and their teeth was were okay. But after a few months, they were absolutely perfect. And this guy, I've still got the email to this day. So all yeah. these things are possible. Yeah. All these things are possible. It's just, it really is glorious. It makes yeah. feeding dogs fun once more. Yeah. The dogs enjoy it. You enjoy it because you actually you can actually recognize food. You know, never feed a dog something that you cut doesn't actually look like food. You know, the, dogs, the dogs are very simple, aren't they? I mean, they've got kind of three things, which is the love of the owner, their exercise and their food. They're, they're very sort of simple creatures like that. And um, a bit like men, really. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say that, Nick, but um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, we all we all think, you know, we're, we're, you know, we all work really hard. You know, we try and uh, provide enrichment on our walks and we're trying to reinvent the walk and, you know, blah, 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 blah. We all we all love our dogs and we you know, like, well, I certainly do lie in, because I've got big dogs, so lie in the dog's beds with the dogs, um, you know, telling them about your day and talking to them in your own little voice, because we've all got one of those, and calling them our nicknames, which we've all got, at least eight nicknames, variations, you know, and, yeah, even the big strong guys out there with the tattoos of 17 stone, you know, we all know that you do it. And, you know, it's when I prepare my dog's food I literally get elation and for me I can see how happy they are they're absolutely you know they can't like you know Genghis he'll, he'll walk so far up and he's but he looks behind like come on because I, I feed them outside you know he's like come on come on and you can see he's ecstatic and I put him into a sit you know because I'd like to you know try and you know make out like you know I'm doing things properly 
and you can see the drool and it's literally like he's shaking he cannot contain himself and then i go okay and he takes his food and he's wagging his tail the entire way through his bowl and for me i don't know if i'm just you know overly simple but i just love that like i it, it's just makes my day because they are absolutely ecstatic about their food and when you look at a bowl of raw food and you look at a bowl of you know processed little brown biscuits you know certainly with mine you know at prodog we do a zillion different varieties so they can have venison on a monday salmon on a tuesday lamb on a wednesday i mean that's just fantastic isn't it why yeah. would you want to give your dog that variation um you know and then you get a little bit adventurous and you throw in some strawberry tops or you know some bits and pieces out of your fridge and an egg and blah 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 blah, blah. and um you know i have two different dogs I, you know genghis will eat everything else leave all the raspberries in the bottom lick them almost clean and then eat them you know whereas uh khan my girl she'll just i don't even have to put the bowl down she, she's just you know a food monster but I'll never get bored of watching that and and knowing that I am just putting in the best nutrition. And ultimately, that's why I can't walk down the street without somebody stopping me going, wow, look at your dog. Because you are what you eat. It's that simple. And I can spot a raw fed dog from a processed food fed dog. I don't know about you guys, literally yeah. from about half a mile away. Because physically, yeah. they just present completely different. They do. Yeah. No yeah. questions asked. Um, Go on, Nick. Sorry, I, I was, I was just going to say about the, the the fussy fussiness. I get presented with a lot of a lot of supposedly fussy dogs, but yeah. when we put them onto raw food, the owner will just go, "Oh my god, this is amazing! They have never been foodie. They have never enjoyed food, and for the first time in their lives, they have got a highlight once or twice a day, which is the food." And I think that's a that's a really massive thing that we can do for our dogs. As you say, Heidi, they're very simple things, you know, good walks, lots of love and good food. Feeding time is a is 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 is, is a massive part of the day. And you can either just give them cardboard, i.e. kibble, or you can make it a thing and feed them real food, which will feed their brains. Yeah, just psychologically, they'll be really, really happy. It helps clean their teeth. It helps keep the, the, the gut. So you are basically with every meal, you're just ticking all the boxes as opposed yeah. to feeding cardboard. So I think it's um it really is simple. Yeah. There are lots of people out there. Uh Heidi's gang are great. They'll really, really look after you. Many people have done this journey and so talk to them and they will guide you through don't let fear stop you from doing it okay because i guarantee you everybody on their when in their first week of feeding raw is terrified you then yeah. talk to them a week or a month later and they will say why didn't i do this 20 years ago yeah. okay and you know that this is just so so common i talk to people about food all day long as do you guys and that's what we hear there are so 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 few people who go on raw and then go back and if they do it's usually just like a convenience thing or something like that which is a, a real shame it's it's once once you've done it you will never go back yeah. i'm just gonna jump in and just just in case there's anyone who's watching in who who really um, is really starting out on hearing about raw maybe this is the first time you've heard about raw feeding what we're actually talking about when we say raw feeding is meat, offal, and ground bone. And it's as simple as that. And as Nick says, there are there are there are simple ways of doing it. I've got lots of links and resources to share at the end. So if you're you're sitting there and you're thinking, right, I'm sold on this, <laughs> I want to get started, I'm gonna share with you some resources at the end. Um, but just before we finish, we've got time to do one myth each okay. so we know there's a ton of myths out there about raw raw food and raw feeding um if you just take one of one of the ones that you hear most often and just tell us the actual facts um behind that myth i've got whole, i've got a whole list of them if you need a prompt okay what just before we go into that this is the book that i was looking for yeah so 
Why You Need to Feed Your Dog a Raw Food Diet by Amy Marshall. Perfect. And in there, it describes the, uh, the process of how they make how they make kibble. Okay, so I'll jump in there. There you go. I'll, I'll let Heidi, what's your favourite myth? I think you've heard a good one recently. Well, yeah, I mean, I've got a couple, but um, the one I heard last week, um, which did make me chuckle, was that a vet had said to a potential customer, uh, raw feeding is not for crossbreeds. And the customer rang me and repeated that to me. And I said, not for crossbreeds. And he was like, yes, and I have a crossbreed. And I said, okay, so is it okay for full pedigree? Or, you know, because, correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, you are the vet, but a dog is kind of a dog. Um, you know, they all kind of got a nose and a tail generally and, you know, four legs. Um, so I was a bit like, oh, um, and I just had to take a moment because I thought, has that actually come out? But he was like, no, that's exactly what the vet said. The vet said, I've got crossbreed and raw feeding is no good for crossbreed. So, you know, I have been, I've been lucky enough to go on safari and I watched um, a pack of African dogs. Um, and I watched, uh, obviously they'd made a kill as a pack and, um, and that kill was out for about three days. We went past it and they were progressively, you know, having a feast on it. Um, now, I understand that our dogs are, are domesticated and probably wouldn't make the greatest hunters because they've never had to hunt. Um, you know, um, my dog would certainly probably gas before he got to the end of the paddock before he caught anything. Um, however, you know, there is, you know, um, anatomically, there is no difference. They have not, you know, they have not evolved to eat kibble. I've heard that one as well. You heard that one, Nick? Dogs have evolved to eat kibble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, it's a 2013 paper by Axelson, which says that there are possibly a couple of genes among the 20,000 genes that, 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 that a dog has that uh, have changed with uh, domestication. But my argument to that is just because you can, you can digest a food stuff doesn't mean it's good for you for example um i can digest alcohol ethanol does that mean i want to have vodka on my cornflakes in the morning you know it's 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 crazy so um the myth the myth that i i was gonna talk about was try if you've got kids try taking your children to your gp with a big bag of of food which says kiddy kibble on it i.e it's scientifically formulated to contain all the fat and carbohydrate and protein and minerals and vitamins try taking that to your gp and suggesting to your gp that that is what you're going to feed your kids on for the rest of their life stage and see how you get on i think you probably wouldn't make it to the door before security came in and carted you away and yet that is considered by the manufacturers to be the ultimate thing there is more like i said at the beginning there's more to this game than nutrition it's about food we know we are learning new things about nutrition every single month okay so to think that we know and therefore we can include it in that bag of kibble is hubris beyond belief it is it is conceit that humans think that they've got it all all sussed and it's our dogs which are suffering because of that conceit we haven't got a clue about much nutrition and therefore if we give our dogs real food and we give real variety then they will sort themselves out has they have been doing for 45 million years i really think it's as simple as that yeah and, and nick what should people do if because i do hear this from a lot of people that i talk to is that their mm -hmm. vet has said that raw is bad <clears throat> yep. and, and obviously a vet is a guiding voice for, for a lot yep. of people vets are seen as as the expert voice and so it can feel quite difficult for people to then make the switch to raw if their vet has advice and not to but what what advice would you have if somebody is watching this and they are in that situation themselves 
Uh, vets are very, very, uh, very well trained. They're very clever, and uh, you know, in, in all those things that they have been trained in, they're, they're fantastic. And I, I salute all my colleagues. However, they haven't been trained in raw food. They haven't seen the the simplicity, the joy, the uh, the results that you can get from raw food. They, 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 they get information from other sources, which is not pro raw food. So, I would say. Um, ask your vet to refer you to a raw feeding vet or, or have a little Google. I founded a, a, a wonderful society called the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society. If you just put Raw Feeding Veterinary Society into Google and go along to the website, we've got a find a vet uh, um, page and you can just put in your postcode and you're the closest vet to you. Will, will pop out of there or you can talk to a vet on a telephone consultation i and many colleagues do telephone consultations as well i think get informed get informed have yeah. treat yeah. yourself to, treat yourself to a book yeah brilliant um, i've got a get, whole heap of resources to share now if for those um in a pro dog team that are in the comments if you could find the find a pro raw vet link and just share that into the comments for people so that they can have easy access to that that would be brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi, for your time. Thank you for your time. So everyone out there watching, don't forget, there is so much more to come this month. We have got an interview next Tuesday with Dr. Judy Morgan. Um, that's at 3.45 p.m. Again, live on this page. We've got an interview with Dr. Katie Woodley as well, the natural pet doctor. That's Thursday, the 18th of August at 4.45. So please, please, please like and follow the page, share, share it with friends and family. And I guess if you feel inspired now to go away and ditch that, ditch the dry, or if you even have like a tiny spark of interest to find out more, then there's just so much we've got available to get you started. So I've got, like I've said, we've got the ProDog team in the comments. So they're going to be sharing the links uh, down below in the comments. So just have a look through. But we've got Dr. Nick's actually got two courses on his website for, for beginners. So just hop over to his website, which is holisticvet.co.uk. You'll see them on his homepage. One is raw feeding for beginners. Uh, and the other is Bones and How to Feed Them, a Pet Parent's Guide. So they are, they're both good starting points, aren't they, Nick? Yep, yep yeah. And in an hour and a half, you'll be, you'll go from 0 to 60 uh, with, 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 with raw feeding. Yeah. Brilliant. We've also got our Pro Dog uh, Facebook group, which is called the Pro Dog Rebellion. So hop over to there, join, join the group. We're in the group daily. We're responding to questions basically just helping people navigate the world of raw feeding. It's a great community in there as well. We've got loads of long-term long raw feeders in the group who are also really happy to help with their knowledge and experience. Uh, also, if you, if you um, land into the group, you have a specific question, just do a search at the top of the group because chances are somebody else has already asked the same question and there will already be lots of Lots of advice in there for you. And um, we also run monthly uh, Facebook Lives in that group as well um, on a different topic every single month, all, all designed to help you make more informed choices, basically, on taking a more natural approach to your, to your dog's health and happiness. Obviously, you can also contact us at ProDog directly. So that's either via Messenger on Facebook, or you can email us directly uh, at customer-services.prodograw.com. Again, we'll share the links in the comments. You can then ask us any specific questions that you have. We've got uh, expert feeding advisors just waiting to be able to help you out there. And that's, Anna, and that's, that's whether you're a ProDog customer or not. Yes. So we don't care. If you've got a question about raw you know, and you want you want some help and advice, you know, just get in touch because that's what we're here for. Yeah, um, 100%. You know. Perfect. And also we've got our Ditch the Dry landing page on our website as well. So on that page that you'll also find a link to our raw feeding guide, our benefits of raw feeding pages. 
And and if that's all you need is a really simple starting point, those two those two pages are really good to to have a look at. Um, and we're also running a competition this month as well. So somebody could win three hundred pounds of Fred or food as well. So hop over to the Ditch the Dry landing page. Again, the links are in the comments. We've, we've got a Ditch the Dry Knowledge Centre as well that's packed full of videos, many of which Dr. Nick has kindly done for us. Lots of articles, lots of information in there as well. But like I said, if you just want a simple starting point, our raw feeding guide is, is a really simple place to start. Also, don't forget to check out Raw Pet Medics, which is every Tuesday, Nick, is that right? <clears throat> every Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, come along. Uh, we, uh, it's it's, it's a, uh, an informal, uh, light-hearted approach to some, uh, some big questions. Uh, and um, there's the three of us, me and Dr. Uh, Connor Brady and Brendan Clark, and we uh, just... Chew the fat for 45 minutes, uh, talking about nutrition and health for mainly dogs, but we talk about cats as well. So lots and lots of interesting stuff. Tonight we are having a summer party and we are going to be discussing nutrition and behavior, nutrition and cognitive decline in the older dog. So lots, Brilliant. lots of interesting stuff. 7 p.m. tonight. Brilliant. Thank you. So that's it from us but just please please go mm. away and take one take one action so whether that action be to share this live with somebody else another dog owner or whether you go and read our raw feeding guide whether you check out nick's courses order a, a sample pack from pro dog or an alternative raw feeding provider um just contact us directly have a look at our ditch the dry page but please just go, go away and, and take an action um, because whatever action you take, it's going to help uh, move another dog one step closer to, to basically living their best life, which is, is ultimately what this is all about. So thank you for your time, Heidi and Nick. Thank you to everyone who's, who's listened in and to everyone who watches this.